Hi, I'm Dawn. This is Hudson Vintage. Today we are looking into the care and feeding of vintage costume jewelry. Almost all the new subscribers unanimously have been asking how I care for my vintage costume jewelry, how I store it, how I clean it. So I'm going to be going over the things that I've been doing for years. So we're going to be covering how to care for rhinestone jewelry, not only vintage, but any rhinestone jewelry should really be cared for this way. Also faux pearls, faux gemstones, pot metal, silver plating, gold plating, and rolled gold, which is super important because I can tell you back in the early days of my collecting, I did ruin a few rolled gold pieces by trying to clean it the wrong way. So there'll be links in the description box below to everything that you might not already have on hand. A lot of it is household items. This is the first in a series. There'll be two more, how to care for your fine vintage and antique jewelry. And then finally, there'll be how to refresh your vintage costume jewelry collection. Those pieces that might need some tightening up of the prongs, or a little bit of a refresh on the gold tone or the silver tone or getting rid of some verdigris. I'll be covering that in the next few weeks. Please click like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out when I make a new video and you can catch all three. Also, I have a Patreon. A lot of you have been emailing me individually with pictures of things that you have. And as I love to, answer the individual emails. It is becoming more difficult as this channel grows. So I'd love to point you to the Patreon. The first tier is only $3. If you sign up, you get access to the Facebook group, the Hudson Vintage Community, and everyone can just post their pictures there. And if there's something I don't know, there might be someone in the group that does know. So we never can underestimate the power of a good group and if you're interested in meeting other people if you're you know if you want to trade or buy or sell or share what you have then definitely sign up for the uh, Facebook group through the Patreon first tier which is called Solid Steel and uh, just to go over what I'm wearing today a few people have asked about this this came from I'm Macy's probably more than a year ago. It's an Effie. I got it on extreme sale. I think I ended up, it's really beautiful. I love Effie diamonds. Um, I think I find them really affordable and really good quality. And this was, I ended up paying like $600 for it and it was originally 2000 and I just had a look at the website and they're having a really good sale. So, <laughs> so if you, any of you are in the mood to buy some diamonds, you might as well do it through my link and help support the channel. And then this I had in the last What's in My Jewelry Box video, and I fell in love with it all over again and have been wearing it ever since. So thank you so much for watching, and let's start with the care, maintenance, feeding of your pet vintage jewelry. <laughs> so we have here the trays that I use for organizing, and these are the... There's two two-inch trays here, but you can also get them in the one-inch. I use the two-inch trays for things that are thicker, like these pearls. And I'm going to start with the most basic thing. This is a the earrings that I wear all the time. And these are crystal. They're actually set in sterling, but for our purposes, it could also be sterling plate. And what I do is I take, I never use the sink. Never, ever use the sink. I have this little old ramekin here or sugar bowl. And I, this is water with one drop of dishwashing liquid. And all you do, if you want to freshen it up, is you put them in there, you let them sit, and you can come back to those later. And I'm gonna put, I might as well put the Levere's in there too. We love the Levere's. You guys have been buying the Levere's and I know you're happy with them. I love them so much. Can't live without those. This, this is 1970s Monet in a fine brushed gold pattern or design. And it has the inside 
there is the signature. And what I would do with something like this is very different than what I would do with this modern Monet piece. This is more delicate. So this would never get the, the cleaning cloth with the tarnish remover or the polisher. This would get probably just a regular paper towel. I like Viva. I recommend Viva paper towels. They are the softest, the most lint-free, the most cushiony. They're really good if you are moving your jewelry around and you need to roll it up in something. I'm just going to dab the tiniest little, tiny, tiniest little bit of water so that it's not moist. It's just, you know, slightly, slightly damp. And then I'm just going to ever so slightly brush it. This is all it takes because you just want to get any surface dirt off it, but you don't want to over clean it. And I can see it already. I don't know if you guys can, but I do have a bit of a trained eye and that's already looking good. And then if there's any buildup on the inside, you just kind of feel it with your fingers. I can definitely see the difference on the inside for sure. And then the thing about costume jewelry is you never ever want to leave any moisture on it. So you could take just the dry part of the paper towel and make sure that you do it that way. But I'm going to take my microfiber cloth, the buffing cloth, and just because it's so absorbent. And this can be a little sticky, so you don't want to like rub like this over um, some of the jewelry that you have. You just want it like in the inside you can do it, but not necessarily on the outside. And then that is clean, done. And then, so remember, no moisture, no cleaning products, no soaps. Then something like this, this is the newer Monet. This you could kind of dip if you want. Again, don't completely submerge. Don't let something like this sit because this is a plating. And then once again, you just want to get any hairspray off it, any, you know, oils from the skin, anything like that. And once again, you just make sure it's completely dry. And you don't, you know, I think the, the thing to remember with costume jewelry, even if it's, you know, very old vintage or more recent vintage or even new, is be gentle with it. And the newer stuff, honestly, I don't know if you could even clean. It's much more difficult. Now we're going to get into, this is a gold plating, and this is the ring that I got in Rome. Some of you may recognize this. What I'm going to do with this is use the polishing cloth, and I keep it in here. I double bag it, actually. Um, there is a link in the description box. Once you get your cloths, always make sure you keep them in a sealed bag and they will last forever. The light side is for cleaning and the dark side is for polishing always. So I haven't ever attempted to clean this ring and I'm not sure how it's gonna come out. It does look like it was tarnishing a bit. You just put a little elbow grease when you're using your actual cleaning cloth. And don't worry about these cleaning cloths getting used and old because they just keep working forever. And I actually, I actually like them when they're a little bit old. I feel like they're safer on vintage jewelry. You never have to worry about getting something too shiny. The key is to get the tarnish off, but not over polish, see? And then you can use the dark cloth and this adds some protection to it to keep it from tarnishing, it'll slow it down. And I also use a um, tarnish resistant fabric as a liner in these trays, and there is a link for that, it's sold by the yard. Also there are liners for the trays with individual slots, so you can be creative. Sometimes I'll use a liner with like 12 compartments to keep things separate, and then I'll put the anti-tarnish cloth over the top, and then I stack. But if you stack trays, they help to keep things from tarnishing just because they're 
stacked. So you might want to just put a piece of cloth over the top one and that is done. And now we'll move on to rhinestones. Rhinestones are tricky. You never ever want to add humidity or moisture to a rhinestone. That is how you get dead rhinestones. They're actually called dead stones. So what I, and also you don't want to use a cleaning cloth because these are rhinestones are often coated like these are AB coated stones so what some people do if they want to destroy their jewelry is they'll take their thing they'll dunk it in and that is a good way to kill a rhinestone what I do um, I will take the first thing I will do if it's just a light cleaning is I will take my Viva paper towel and I will carefully and you want to check the prongs for prong set you want to listen and see if you can hear them rattle if you can hear it, it's time to tighten the prongs. And the way that I do that is I will take a tool like this and I will use the rubber bottom and I will just press the prongs back down. These are actually tight, so it's not a good example to show you how to tighten a loose stone, but this works well and you can often feel it. You can just run your finger over it and feel for any prongs that might be sticking up or have moved up slightly and then you just press it down gently and that takes care of that. And to clean the rhinestones, these are actually pretty clean. So as an example, I would just do this. At the same time, I can tell that the prongs are all good and then go over the ring like this. Maybe the ring part you want to polish a little bit so you can use the cloth for that. And that one's done. This is a little cheapy, and that's a glued in stone. I thought I'd bring it out just to show you how to handle that. That is also not submerged. That's just a little shine with the clean cloth, and then um, a little protector with the shine cloth. And that already looks much better. Now, this is a vintage rhinestone barrette. I think it's French, if I remember correctly. It might be Nina Rishi. And there is one stone here that I can see with my eye. Because it's a barrette, it must have gotten a little dirty here, maybe a hair product or something. See how that's just a little fuzzy? So this is how I clean rhinestone jewelry specifically. And I take a cotton swab and I remove one side, <laughs> the cotton. Almost completely. And I get it down to almost nothing. Right, just a little point like that. And then I will take it and put it in the little water with the one drop of dishwashing liquid and it's just slightly moist. So you take that and you put it like this. You start with the very top of the stone, the table, and then you move to the sides. And this, I can hear that rattle. So you just do that and you do that. And if you want to get underneath there, then you have to take this cotton out even more and get under like that. But remember, the idea is to never leave any moisture. And then you can use the paper towel. Don't use the microfiber here because the prongs, it'll stick. So you just want to do that. And that's already blending in now. These look like they belong. And then I'm going to take my because I heard the rattle. I'm just going to run my finger over it and find out where that is. And I can, if I push this way, I can feel it move here. So I'm going to tighten it up that way and push it down that way. And I'm not wearing my dick. That sounds better. And that'll keep you from that, yep, yeah, that's perfect. That, and that'll keep you from losing any stones. And 
Now, this is a faux pearl. And I took the big ones because I wanted to show, I wanted it to be really, really clear. And you can't use any products with a faux pearl. These are Banana Republic, I think from like the 1990s. I love how big they are, they're really cool. Um, but you can see if I put it next to the light, you can see that some of them are kind of discolored. So what you would do here is try this first. You wanna be gentle and go in between where the knots are, where they're knotted, and look at it that way. And what I would do is I would go down, I'm feeling now the edge of each pearl, what is essentially the top. And I'm going in between on the strand. And then I'm gonna turn it over and get the other side. And you wanna be gentle because you don't wanna mess up that you know they're evenly knotted right now so you don't want to pull too hard and there we go and I'm just and this is totally dry microfiber if I wanted to get a little crazy maybe I would put one corner in the water with the one drop of soap Make sure it's almost completely dry, just slightly, slightly damp. And then go back to that one pearl and kind of gently just, you know, feel the surface of the pearl. You don't want to permeate it too much. You just kind of want to get over the top of it, turn it around, and then once you do that, you can try and dry and pick up whatever you just wet that was old dirt. And that is done. And now in this tray we have 1950s gold plated faux gemstone. This is a faux jelly opal and a little rhinestone. And this you can actually put in the because it's not a cleaning so you don't have to worry about the gold plating it's not a, um, a cleaning fluid also I don't really recommend now the thing you have to do when you have set stones like this if they're not rhinestones and they're not foiled backs you can clean them the way that I just did but you never want to leave anything really wet. You always have to dry everything completely. So I didn't like the way that the prongs were holding on to the loops and the microfiber, so I'm switching to the paper towel. You just want to make sure everything is really, really dry. There is a rhinestone in here. Kind of just might have made a mistake, but because I submerged it, if I leave that to dry on its own and the moisture gets stuck in there for too long, it will kill that rhinestone. So my goal now is to just make sure everything is really, 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 really dry. And I might even hit that with a blow dryer on cool later. But for the meantime, the thing to do is sit it, hang, put it upside down on a surface. I always use an ottoman because I like the soft surface. That way if I get uh, the dropsies, I'm just dropping things on something soft. And then this is the rolled gold Victorian watch chain, watch fob chain, and it has a little genuine opal and seed pearls. And this is probably, this is probably nine karat gold or low karat gold on the rolled gold chain. That's typically what they did. Now, rolled gold, if you were to use these cloths, you would get rid of the rolled gold. So never do that, uh, never. What I would do is the same technique, just the slightly, slightly almost dry microfiber on the chain and the clasp in one direction and then you go back in the other direction and then you dry it with the paper towel right away and you can see that surface. this does have a nice patina on it and it's pretty even so instead of trying to take that off I prefer that you can see it is coming off onto the paper towel now because all I did was slightly moisten it. 
with the microfiber cloth. So you just want to make sure you get it really dry. And then you'll be left with just the natural rolled gold. And that is done. I'm just going to show you this, the final thing. These are the CZs. And these are actually set in sterling, but if it was silver plated, it would matter. It would still be the same technique. And look how much better they look already. And then you just do this to knock everything off. That's all you do. And then you make sure that you dry that completely. You want to get the top. You can go in with the Q-tip if you want to in between or the, um, the little rubber thing. Sometimes I'll use that comes the bottom of, um, you know, that you use for your gums, right? The bottom of the toothbrush or the dental thing that's handy or soft toothbrush. You get in there and look how pretty that looks. Boy, that was overdue. <laughs> And you would sit these upside down and let them dry that way. And then finally, I almost forgot the last, last, last thing. I wanted to show you my technique for moving jewelry around. This is an upside down cake carrier. They sell these for a dollar at the dollar store and it's super handy. This is actually all my repair stuff that needs repairs in here right now. But it's important that you get the flat ones because they stack. I actually linked them on Amazon so you can get an idea of what they look like, but they are at the dollar store for a dollar and Amazon they're $10. So the cool thing about this is that you can see in it, it's flat top, it stacks, and then you can have the bottom part become a tray that you can work on right away. So if you keep in your car, you know, some Viva paper towels in a case like this, whenever you go shopping or sourcing or whatever, you know, you'll always have a way to transport everything. You don't have to worry about damaging it before you get home. And that's everything for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you did, please give the usual and customary thumbs up. Next week, we are doing fine jewelry care and maintenance. And see you next time. Thank you again. The Patreon account, it is $3 a month. And then you can, damn it. And then you can, damn it.